Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's top stories, let's head outside and take a look outside our sweltering weather window on this Wednesday. And boy, typical late July weather for us around this part of the world, isn't it? As we look down at the Wenatchee Valley from our cross camera up on Wenatchee Heights, lots of blue sky out there. There were some light, thin clouds, but it didn't hold our temperature down much today. We did top off at 105. And keep in mind, we're at the bottom of this page. Look at the next two days, 107 for tomorrow and 105 on Friday, 106 is our records for both of those days. So they could both fall over the next two days before we cool down as we get into the first part of next week. And we'll have all your weather details coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the news stories we're following for you tonight. Firefighters had to extinguish a fire burning in heavy brush and trees early this morning on the Douglas County side of the Apple Capital Loop Trail. The man suspected of burglarizing several Leavenworth and Lake Wenatchee cabins has been formally charged with that crime. And a man who rammed his car into a Wenatchee police patrol vehicle in 2020 will serve a year and a day in jail. But first, our top story tonight. Fire crews yesterday afternoon were able to contain a wildfire that burned almost 600 acres in a remote area of Douglas County. The fire between east of Bridgeport in the direction of Grand Coulee was first reported about 6.30 yesterday morning, burning in grass and brush on Bureau of Land Management land near an area called Nils Corner or Leahy Junction. BLM Douglas County Fire Districts 3 and 5 and firefighters from Electric City, Cooley Dam, Bridgeport and Mansfield all responded. Air resources were deployed late yesterday morning to drop water on several hot spots. The State Department of Natural Resources Wildcad reports show the fire was contained at about 4.30 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Firefighters had to extinguish a fire burning in heavy brush and trees early this morning on the Douglas County side of the Apple Capital Loop Trail. Kay McKellar with Douglas County Fire District 2 said the fire is believed to have been human caused, but there were no people around when firefighters arrived. The fire was reported at 5.38 a.m. off the trail access point at 19th Street in East Wenatchee. By about 7.15 a.m., firefighters had the fire contained to about a 75 by 75 foot area. Both Douglas County Fire District 2 and Chelan County Fire District 1 responded to that fire. Well, the man suspected of burglarizing several Leavenworth and Lake Wenatchee cabins has been formally charged with that crime. Kevin Michael Waters of Leavenworth was being held on charges of possessing and trafficking stolen property that was taken during a series of break-ins over the winter and spring. Yesterday, Chelan County prosecutors added counts of first-degree burglary, first-degree theft, theft of a firearm, and malicious mischief. Sheriff's deputies began to suspect the 33-year-old Waters when he allegedly attempted to sell about $50,000 worth of goods stolen in burglaries of vacation homes, as well as break-ins at the Leavenworth Ski Hill Lodge. Well, a man who rammed his car into a Wenatchee police patrol vehicle in 2020 will serve a year and a day in jail. 28-year-old Antonio Banuelos of East Wenatchee was sentenced yesterday in Douglas County Superior Court after pleading guilty to charges of eluding police, malicious mischief, fourth-degree assault, and hit-and-run. In May of 2020, Banuelos drove away in an orange Kia when a police officer tried to stop him in South Wenatchee and headed east across the George Seller Bridge. During that chase, he crashed into a Knight Street guardrail and rammed the pursuing police car with his own before abandoning his vehicle and disappearing. The officer in the car suffered minor injuries. Benuelos left his ID behind in the car and police arrested him about 24 hours later. Well, when we come back, we talk to an Afghan refugee now living in Wenatchee about his perilous journey out of that country. May 10th has now been named for longtime Malaga resident Herb Gardner. 
And ENIAT firefighters will be doing some perfectly timed testing on the deck guns on their fire engines coming up on Thursday. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. I'm John Volan, and I'm running for judge here in Chelan County. For more than 20 years, I've upheld the rights of the local community as a attorney, trial lawyer, and part-time judge. This fall, I'm running for district court judge. I'm highly endorsed by the legal and local communities for my thorough, fair-minded, and just approach. I'm the only candidate with civil, criminal experience, but experience as a judge as well. This fall, vote John Volan for Chelan County district court judge. Hello, my name is Brian Brett, the Fire Chief for Chelan County Fire District 1, and I just wanted to talk about how amazing our RiverCom team is. They are intentional, purposeful, and skillful in everything they do, and they are the best at what they do. How they prepare, how they handle the caller, how they coordinate the emergency services, and how they push themselves to be the best. This is the kind of spirit that our RiverCom telecommunicators have. Our community needs you, we need you, we admire you, you're our lifeline. Welcome back. In another news, Rashad Ahmad Nouri was working for NATO in Afghanistan before the Taliban regained control of that country last year, which put him and his family in extreme peril. Earlier this month, he and his family took up residence in Wenatchee. He talked with Wake Up Wenatchee Valley's Dan Kuntz about his perilous journey out of the country as thousands of other Afghanis were attempting to flee. Like in Afghanistan for 10 years, I was working for the NATO in a different companies uh, in the Kabul airport. The army camp was located on the Kabul airport. On the 2015, I guess, when Taliban came to Kabul city, so I was staying at home and I was thinking to move from country because Taliban on the past they was had problem with those people who was working for NATO for the Americans so because of that we was scared it was more than 100,000 people was around the airport so then they wrote me again we cannot make the way to get you inside so go come back two o'clock at night and I said, it's almost 10 o'clock, so I can wait like five hours more. And I wait there five for five hours. I was waiting for my kids, with my wife, and my dad, and my older brother also. They was helping me. They was with us. Because from the other side, uh, NATO members, they was firing some kind of fires to scare the people to not approach to the wall of the airport. And from the other side, Taliban was firing. Look, from the both sides was firing, kids was scaring a lot and they was shouting. So that's why my dad and my older brother was staying with us. Then around two o'clock at night, they sent me a location to get exactly on this point. Like I was here and they sent me a location for 30 meters far. And there was a dark place. It was next to the airport wall and I get there then they call me there is a metal from the net from the metal mate so they open that metal net and they call me get inside me my wife and my kids we went inside it was this small this much a small passage we walked like 10 minutes then there was the other soldiers they told us to stop and they asked who called you how you can how you came here and i told them that mr alex called me I have been work. I had the badge of that uh, HKIA camp, and I showed them that badge, and I told them that Alex called me. Then Alex was also in five minutes. He came there, and he said, as he is Rashad, he have my photo and my kids' photo. He checked, and he said, you're good, come inside. 
Well, Hallmark hasn't made a card for it yet, but May 10th is now officially Herb Gardner Day. Chelan County Commissioners voted yesterday to honor the Malaga resident next May 10th, Gardner's birthday. Gardner is a longtime water commissioner and community council member in Malaga, as well as a civic volunteer, activist, and former teacher. He and his wife Anne have lived in the community since 1972. Gardner is currently living with pancreatic cancer. County Commissioner Chairman Kevin Overbay said, quote, there isn't anything in the Malaga community that doesn't have Herb's fingerprint on it. Well, ENIAT firefighters will be doing some perfectly timed testing of the deck guns on their fire engines Thursday, meaning water will be pouring down on people who just happened to get in the way on the hottest day of the year. Chelan County Fire District 8 said unless they're called out on a fire, they'll be spraying the water about 4 p.m. on the grassy area at Eniat City Park. Quote, come cool off and have some fun with us, unquote, the fire district posted on its social media page. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Why is Jesse Jensen lying about Reagan Dunn? Because Jensen's hiding that he called socialist Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez a fantastic role model. Like AOC, Jesse Jensen vowed to raise income and payroll taxes for government-run health care. Reagan Dunn's endorsed by Sheriff Dave Reichert and Washington police and sheriffs. Jensen praised socialist AOC. Reagan Dunn backed our cops, and they back him for Congress. I'm Reagan Dunn, and I approve this message. Introducing Alpine Airman, because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. Traditional values and innovation in honoring the life of each family we serve is part of the ministry of Heritage Memorial Chapel. Our staff is committed to walk with your family with compassion through this time of grief. We are here to help and here to serve the right kind of help when you need it most. Heritage Memorial Chapel. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, the second of our interviews with the three candidates for Chelan County Clerk, we meet Brandy Buck. Brandy is a 38-year-old real estate agent who's running for political office for the first time. She also admits she's coming into the race with some legal baggage. She's currently awaiting court hearings on two charges of driving on a suspended license related to a DUI she committed in 2009. She spoke about those issues with NCW Life's Jefferson Robbins. I just want to get involved. I really just have the eagerness to help people. And I, I just want people to feel that and know that, you know, I'm on their side and I'm going to fight for them, whatever their needs may be. From your point of view, can, can you sort of outline what the Chelan County Clerk does for people? Yeah. Um, you're managing jurors, you're sitting in uh, court minutes, you're delivering and processing court documents, uh, you're going through uh, processing applications for permits and passports, uh, you're managing a team of about 19 people, uh, whether that's your, your clerks or your court facilitators and just making sure that everybody's on task and um, is very knowledgeable and has gone through proper training to provide uh, quality customer service uh, to the community. People come in, they get trained in a clerical role or in a facilitator role, and then there's a better offer someplace else. Um, how does the county clerk's office go about, or how should it go about retaining people once they've come into the job? I think this all comes back to budgeting properly and making sure that the taxpayer's money is uh, spent properly, you know. Uh, there's 
a whole bunch of different um, departments that we need to focus on, and obviously this is one of those departments that we really need to focus on retaining uh, quality workers. Uh, if they're moving somewhere else, there's got to be a reason for that, and we need to, you know, assess the situation and figure out a solution collectively. Um, right now, you're dealing with um, two cases of driving while license suspended, um, vehicular cases that are pending in Chelan County District Court. And those, as you've told me before we went on the air, uh, date back to a, a DUI arrest in 2009. Mm -hmm. um, and so when people uh, see that record and attach your name to it, um, what would you say to them as far as uh, you know how you're dealing with the situation and and why they should look past it? You know, like you said, it was a result of a DUI back in 2009, over 12 years ago, and um, there was somehow in there uh, I got a speeding ticket, and it affected the status of my license somehow a few years ago, and I was unaware of this status change, and um, you know I got pulled over for because of the status of my license and. Um, these two tickets are kind of coinciding together, but uh, you know my attorneys are working diligently on getting this matter resolved and it, hopefully getting it dismissed because we think that there is an error because it was so long ago. So um, I just hope that we can really focus on supporting our local law enforcement on going after you know violent crime and the war on drugs. And I don't want to focus on um, you know something as minimal as a, a traffic violation. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Day number three of 100 degrees or hotter. How about this? Unofficially today, 105 degrees, that's three degrees below our record in that scorching hot summer of 1998. 90 is our normal high temperature for this time of year, so we blew by that. 72 our low this morning, 64 is our normal low temperature, and our record that was set back in 1976 at 54 degrees. Sunrise at 533 this morning, sunset tonight will be at 841. Taking a look at tomorrow's temperatures, Record setting, possibly all over our viewing area. 107, Moses Lake, Afraida, Quincy, Wenatchee. That would be a new record for Wenatchee. We'll have to check some other records back in the Columbia Basin. A little bit cooler back to our west and to the north. 103 in Leavenworth, 104 in Eniat. And also, if you're heading to Lake Chelan tomorrow, how about 104 degrees? Tonight, once again, high pressure remains in control of our weather. There's also a surface high that's moving inland, and that will really kick up that heat from the southwest beginning tomorrow. Low temperatures tonight, can you believe it, in the upper 70s for overnight lows. Thursday, sunny, hotter, possibly a record-setting day. We're thinking about 107, 106 is our record, so we'll keep an eye on that. Friday, our record high, also 106 degrees, and that's about where we figure we'll be on Friday, so we could have two records in a row. Saturday, not going to get much relief. Sunshine all over the western United States as high pressure remains in control. Highs on Saturday right around that 105 degree mark. Still hot for Sunday as we end our weekend. We will cool down just a touch, but between 100 and 105 degrees before the real cool down begins, and that'll be on Monday. Slightly cooler with sunshine. Highs in the mid 90s on Monday, and even more relief as we get you into Tuesday. Sunshine and cooler with high temperatures then right around 90 degrees. Let's take a look at that seven day forecast now. Remember, records possible both Thursday and Friday, 105 on Saturday, a little better Sunday at 102, sunny for both Monday and Tuesday, 96 degrees your high temperature on Monday and 91 for Tuesday. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. I'm Sheriff Brian Burnett. I developed local relationships, built trust regionally, and brought statewide resources to build a safer Chelan County. As your sheriff, I will continue to enhance safety during these dangerous times. Now is not the time to get soft. Trust my continued leadership 
to protect our quality of life and your constitutional rights. Your vote matters. Vote Brian Burnett, Chelan County Sheriff. Welcome to Click It RV, how can I help you? We're looking to trade in our tent for a new RV. Perfect, let's take a look. Water heater? Nope. Does it have a queen bed? No. Does it have a bathroom? No. How about air conditioning? Nope. Well, you're in luck. We have the perfect solution for you. We'll give you $1,000 for it. What? What? That's right. At Click It RV in July, trade your tent in for an extra $1,000 towards your RV purchase. Come see us today. Sports Update on the NCW Live Channel. And a happy Wednesday to you. The Mariners walked off with a win against Texas last night, and we're going for the series sweep against the Rangers today. We'll have those highlights coming up tomorrow on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. But Seattle's bullpen uncharacteristically squandered a lead late and had to come from behind in the ninth for the 5-4 win last night. Cal Raleigh hit a game-tying RBI double in the final frame before Carlos Santana walked it off with an RBI sack fly with the bases loaded for the win. Julio Rodriguez was back in the lineup for the first time since the All-Star game and made his presence felt right away. Good to have Julio back in the lineup. First game since uh, the 17th of this month. He went two for four. Track deep. Long. That's through the hole of base hit. Here comes Gino. He's getting away from going to score easily. Kyle Lewis ringing a bell with an RBI single with two outs, and it's 2 nothing Mariners. RBI number four for Kyle. It below flares this one out over short. That drops in. Base hit. Here comes Garcia. He got a great jump. He'll score without a throw. And Lowe delivers an RBI single left on left to get the Rangers on the board. He drives this one high, deep. Left field, giddy up, and gone! Home run, Cal Raleigh. His 14th home run, RBI number 36 in the Mariners. Added another run to make it 3-1 Seattle here in the home seventh. Just the, the heartbeat for these spots is Adoles. And he runs it. it over first. That's a base hit. Could be big time trouble. One run is in. They're going to wave Culberson. Here comes a throw. He's in there. And the game is tied. El Bombi has done it again. Unbelievable. It's the other way. Can Haggerty get it? No. Runners coming around third, and he is going to score. And in the second with the double, and he came off the bag and attacked by J.P. Crawford. He kept him on, kept the tag on him the entire time. Wide open right side of the infield. Goes that way. Yeah, that'll work. J.P. Frey at the at second, coming to third. Man, he's going to win him. He's going to score. Here's the throw. Not in time. Kyle Raleigh, what a night. He has been some kind of hot. That's not a bad pitch. That's a fast on the outside corner at 94 and he hits it into the gap. Ball just jumps off his back. As you see JP flying around the bases, Manny acting the third base coach not hesitating at all. Martin deals. Flat ball. Medium center field. Here comes Cal. Here's the throw to the plate. What an exciting victory. And they're going to take a look at this play at the plate. I don't know if they're going to take a look at the play at the plate or Cal. They leaving too early. It was, it was close. It was close. It was really close on Cal. Here's the timing of it. You can right when he catches it, see, how, see if Cal leaves early or not. Adam Hamry, the third base umpire. Look at him right that on the case. That is so close. 
It's it's tough. It looks like his body starts to move, but I'm not sure his foot left the base. Yeah, I agree with you. Here we go. Second come from behind win. A lot of excitement last night. George Kirby pitched five innings, a shutout ball before the bullpen faltered. Manager Scott Service says they're not all pretty, but a win is a win. Not the cleanest or prettiest uh, win, but it's a win, and they all count. And, um, you know, finding different ways to win. Uh, every night, uh, sometimes it is an adventure, and tonight it certainly was. But uh, in typical fashion, our guys find a way. We don't give up. We don't quit. And um, some big at-bats there late in the game. Um, JP getting it going. Cal Raleigh, big night, obviously. The home run and the double late. And then uh, nice to have a veteran uh, up there in that spot with the bases loaded. Pretty much figured they would walk Julio and tie, and I felt really good about Carlos uh, being patient enough to get a good pitch and get the job done. So, again, Tight ball game. We've had a lot of these with Texas, uh, and we found a way to get it done tonight. It wasn't pretty, but we'll take it. Day game today, getaway day afterwards. Mariners start a seven-game road trip tomorrow in Houston. On the Les Schwab American League West scoreboard, Jose Suarez and two relievers combined on a five-hit shutout as the Angels blank the Royals 6-0. Chad Pinder's grand slam home run in the third inning was the difference as Oakland made it two in a row over Houston with a 5-3 victory. Seattle leapfrog Tampa Bay into the second wildcard spot after the Rays fell to Baltimore 5-3. Cleveland beat Boston 8-3 to remain two and a half games back. The White Sox moved ahead of the Red Sox to uh, three games back with a 2-1 win at Colorado. Well, the Apple Sox adva took advantage of some sloppy defense to beat Cowlitz 9-2 last night at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. Black Bears committed five errors on the evening while Michael Davini had uh, or the, uh, had a three-hit night for Wodanchi. He We get more on the game from the voice of the Apple Sox, Joel Norman. The Apple Sox opened up their series against the Cowlitz Black Bears with a 9-2 victory on Tuesday night at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. Wodanchi scored seven runs in the bottom of the third inning, and Garrett Gores tossed five and two-thirds innings of scoreless relief. No strikeouts for him, only one walk and one strikeout, and Michael Davini led the offense going three for five with one run driven in and two runs scored. The Apple Sox will look to pick up a series victory against the Black Bears on Wednesday night as they face them at 6.35 p.m. With your Apple Sox update, I'm Joel Norman. Thank you much, Joel. Seahawks training camp started on a sad note yesterday as Seattle announced it was releasing running back Chris Carson. Carson failed a physical following a neck injury and resulting surgery last season. He's expected to retire after playing for Seattle for five seasons. Seattle also waived linebacker Ben Burkirvan following a knee surgery. He would go on injured reserve if he clears waivers. Seahawks also put quarterback Trey Brown, linebacker John Radigan, tackle Liam Ryan, and linebacker Tariq Smith on the physically unable to perform list to open camp. Being on the pup list during camp means a player could rejoin the team at any time. Landing on the pup list during the season means a certain amount of weeks lost. That's a look at sports. Grant, back to you. Thanks a bunch, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thanks, Grant. On the next edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, we're going to help out the family of Rashad, who is a refugee from the war-torn area of Afghanistan. His family and his three girls are here in the Wenatchee Valley. Doug Head uh, is helped spearheading the fundraising effort to get this guy settled in. It's a fascinating story how he escaped just terrible circumstances on the other side of the world. You can help out this outstanding young gentleman and we'll tell you how on the next edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Dan. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for being with us and have a great night. News, weather, and sports. It's all here weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 on your local news source, the NCW Life Channel.